Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to you at home viewing through Channel 10 and to you, ladies and gentlemen, here at Leichhardt. I'm John Brennan and welcome to Leichhardt Oval for our 11th Cup Final, the 1985 Commonwealth Bank Cup. And tonight's Cup finalists involve a classic front confrontation, probably the best match we've ever had in our Commonwealth Bank Cup. Two champion schools, Ashcroft High, Cup finalists on three occasions, Cup winners in 1977, and their opponents, Patrician Brothers Fairfield. They've now reached six Cup finals and have won on four occasions, 1975, 78, 82 and 83. In just a few moments' time, the teams will be ready for the Commonwealth Bank Cup final of 1985. Ashcroft High will be the first team that will introduce, and introducing first of all, number one and fullback, Darren Bell. Number two on the wing, Kimber Rothwell. Number three and inside centre, Bruce. Emery. Four and outside centre, Glenn Kelly. Number five on the wing, Paul Smith. Six and five eighth, Tony Casado. Seven and halfback, David Rolls. Eight, and at lock, the youngest of the side, Dale Leckett. Number nine in the second row, Arthur Smith. Number ten, and his partner in the second row, Peter Grove. Eleven, and the prop forward, Jim Bell. Number 12, the hooker, Chris Darling. And number 13, their prop forward, their skipper and school captain, Tony Fay. So there you have them. The Ashcroft side for 85, there is the graphic up there on your screen showing the positions in which they'll play in this great cup final. Let's introduce Patrician Brothers from Fairfield. Number one and fullback, Greg Mannix. Number two, left wing, Frank Salerno. Number three, at inside centre, Paul Robertson. Four, at outside centre, Sam Tapper. Number five, on the wing, Kyle Ashpole. Number six, and their five-eighth, Stephen Karate. Seven at halfback, Mark Watson. Eight and at lock forward, their skipper, Billy Burke. Nine in the second row, Robert Frigio. Ten, headgeared, and his second row partner, Kyle White. Number 11, their prop forward, Mitch Newton. Twelve, and their young hooker, Stephen Cartwright. And finally, number 13, their big prop forward, Murray Price. And once again, the layout up there for you, the positions in which the respective players will take up their 
respective roles for our cup final tonight. And the referee for tonight's match is Mr. Graham West. And there it is, the cup final night. And you've met the survivors, Ashcroft High, winners in 77, and Patrician Brothers Fairfield, four times winners of the cup, and in search of their record fifth win, but Ashcroft uh, more than ready to deny their chance, let me tell you. Bill Anderson, my co-commentator, and I know that you've been very impressed with Ashcroft these past four months. Certainly have, John. These are two of the most famous rugby league schools in Australia. They're absolutely steeped in tradition, and without doubt on their performances this year, both sides truly deserve to be vying for the Commonwealth Bank Cup. Well, there it is. Um, Billy Anderson, our co-commentator, Ray O'Donnell, as always, our st statistician. And tonight we also announce the player of the year. Any one of five players could take it off. And conditions are just ideal for a very finely contested final. Just a colour reminder for you. Fairfield in their traditional double blue uniform running left to right of your screen. And, of course, Ashcroft decked out in their maroon and gold. The turf looking pretty friendly, pretty firm, and a glorious night out here. A little bit of a bite in the air, and if any assistance, a wind assistance to Ashcroft in the first half, blowing from the right. Graham West, our referee. And Ashcroft will kick her off through their 5'8", Tony Casado. Keep your eye on him. Two tries against keeper high. Kick three goals, three points, our player of the year and an outstanding player. But to bring it forward for Patrician Brothers Fairfield, first of all, was Frank Solano. He missed the match last time. A little bit of illegal play there from coming from Peter Grove. Not allowing you to play the ball, and referee West has awarded the first penalty of the evening to Fairfield Patrician Brothers. I think one season of, in which, sorry, Bill, go on. I think one of the areas where Ashcroft do have an advantage is in their aggressive, their aggression in the forwards, and that being the case, there's no doubt that they'll certainly try to uh, to dominate Patrician Brothers in this area. But while they're doing that, they've also got to watch that they can't afford to give away penalties because Patrician Brothers are a side with a good goal kicker in Mannix. They've got a very good kicking game, and they play safety first football. Taking it up for Patrician Brothers, Fairfield is Murray Price. Down there on the, on the touchline, and with us tonight, Graham Hughes. Good evening, John. I think it's going to be a great match this evening, of course. Uh, Ashcroft going into the game as the red-hot favourites. They've got a great flair and attack, but to win this game, it's, it's sometimes a hurdle to play as the favourites, and they've got to get their defence in order, and as Bill said, not give away too many penalties early on and let Fairfield sneak into the game. Graham Hughes will be with us down on the touchline all night. Mark Watson trapped. Leggett was there for Ashcroft. And coming up now, Cartwright at acting half. Last one on, fist, on Fairfield, Karate. He's a lovely kicker of the ball, this fella. Beautifully taken by Kimber Rothwell. The big try against Kibra High. And uh, a good 15-metre gain for Ashcroft. Tackler there was Kyle White. Back now, keep your eye on this fella. Casado. Mannix, Greg Mannix, danger man with a very busy game. Up over his quarter. Control there again. Up there was uh, Bruce Emery, and likewise, D Dale Leggett. Tapper, well and truly halted. A little bit of a spice first up in the opening minutes, but uh, referee in there like a district attorney, laying the law down and uh, pointing at the respective players. But, of course, the adrenaline is running very sharply at the moment, Bill. Well, it is. I suppose that both sides have, uh, have got a lot of excitement that's been built up in the dressing room, and to be this far in a competition where it comes down to sudden death would mean a lot to these fellows but they've got to be able to temper that enthusiasm with some common sense and you can't afford to wait, afford to give away penalties and even worse than that you can't afford to play with 12 men if you've got someone in the sin bin or sent off well ashcroft of course uh, flying high at the moment and uh, they have an underlying will to be premiers and uh, i think they'll take some toppling Having a few words with their skipper, Tony Fay, as I said, the captain and school captain, rep New South Wales and the honorary schoolboy side last year. The offender, Ashcroft, and the penalty is with Fairfield. Been a season in which Fairfield exceeded their wildest hopes, too. They didn't attend the Forbes knockout. They started the season late. They highlighted the year with a stunning 16-4 upset over the co-favourites and Greggs of Campbelltown. It's been a bumper 85 for them. Can they collect their fifth Commonwealth Bank Cup title? They're challenging tonight for that all-time record. And here comes Newton. John, I think one of the interesting sidelights of this match that you've 
you've probably got on display some of the best schoolboy football that you could ever want to see. Karate for Patrician Brothers Fairfield is an outstanding performer, but on the other side of the slate, I think the two halves for Ashcroft, Casado and Rolls, that are tremendous players. They're players that could move into great football immediately and they'd lose nothing in comparison. That was Casado very cleverly, uh, just fumbling it and, as you saw, got the boot to the ball and aimed for the line, missed it by a couple of metres, and the young fellow to whom Billy referred, Steve Karate, uh, a centre for Parramatta's under 23. So I think we're referring to Mark Watson too, their halfback. So the penalty um, offside, and uh, it was uh, Frank Solano is with Ashcroft High. Gets a little bit of pressure off them. Very impressive side. This equal to their great side of the early 70s class football they've given us all year on Channel 10. And I think in some of the matches we've seen spectacles to remember, and they're completely unchallenged up until tonight as the footy high school in Australia of the year. They formed the wall. Nicely done as Bell comes through. <coughs> Stem any further progress. This is Rolls. A little bit of shoddy ball. Casado there to retrieve, but for the knock on, a scrum to go down eight metres short of halfway in Ashcroft's territory. Both sides are still very much feeling their way, and a reflection of that is the fact there's been so much drop ball. What the coaches would both have been hoping for would have been for sides to settle down, to use up their six tackles and control the ball early, but that hasn't been happening. And let's put it down to nerves and some fairly savage tackling. You've summed it up very well, Bill, as Watson goes to ground engulfed by the Ashcroft defence. From acting half goes Frank Solano. Crackling speed net a couple of tries against Eastwood Maris Brothers from Cartwright straight away to Watson. Searching. Nice backflip pass to Cartwright. And again, the defence from Ashcroft is good, sure and drum tight. Newton through Karate. Murray Price had a big game last week against Copeland. He was tank right with a heart like a lion. But Ashcroft not allowing a yard in which to move first up. Watson through Karate. There he is for the line again. Darren Bell there. Well done. And forced out through Sam Tapper. Sam Tapper uh, excited all and sundry on television last week. He's number four in the Fairfield jumper. Scored four tries against Copeland. And uh, very cool and very dynamic in his defence, as you saw him drive Bell over touch. It's on Ashcroft's quarter. Referee Graham West. Stern words with the respective packs. Good tight and snug. The shove is on. Watson serves. Fairfield with a loose head. And the last time we saw Ashcroft, this was an area where they fell down. Their scrummaging wasn't good, and they won't be able to afford to give too much possession to Patrician Brothers tonight. Not feeding it correctly, and West awards the penalty to Ashcroft. I think with uh, the Ashcroft coach, uh, Mark Rusco, Graham Hughes. Thanks, John. Mark, I've mentioned it's the start of the game that one of the biggest hurdles for a side to go into a final can sometimes be that they go in as the hot favourites as Ashcroft, Ashcroft have done tonight. Yes, it is rather hard to overcome sometimes, but we seem to get by every now and again. I believe you've been with this side for quite a while. Yes, yeah, Stephen Davies and myself have been coaching most of these boys since they were 12, 13 years old. So we know them pretty well and they know us pretty well and they, they know it's expected and they get out on the field and they, they carry out our instructions to the letter. That's what all, all we can ask of them. What about the danger men on the Fairfield side? Uh, probably Karate. Well, Steve Karate could be a bit of a danger, but I think Tony Casado, you know, being a state under 18 rep, should be able to contain him rather well. I think our forwards will win us the game. Thanks, Mark, and good luck. Thanks, Graham. Very committed man, Mark Rusco. And, of course, uh, Stephen Davies, the co-coaches of Ashcroft High, and haven't they done a sterling job this year? Bill Anderson and I had the pleasure of flying with that Ashcroft side to Port Macquarie, then bussing down to Lismore, and these young men of exemplary behaviour. This country could do more of the colour of these young men, let me tell you. Penalty. We might, get on the a, we might get an opportunity here to have a look at one of the set plays that Ashcroft have got. Their two coaches have developed some very complex and uh, very good moves. They've already put one on tonight. It wasn't successful. But let's see what's developed here. They've done a great job as far as developing a pattern and combination within this side. OK, it's Chris Darling. Decoy work, Grove. Pumbling him about 12 metres out from Fairfield's goal line. Through Darling again, rolls. 
bypassing Casado, getting it out to Faye. Rolls on a backup on a double round. Snapped out, almost a sneak thief by Tapper. And for the double knock on, a scrum just inside the quarter of Fairfield. Nil all after four minutes of play. Tonight we'll again be making the decision on the player of the year. Four players bunched at the lead on six points. Paul Robertson of Fairfield. He's wearing jumper number three out there tonight. On five points, Mark Watson of Fairfield, the halfback. This is he with the ball now, trying to make a probe. And Tony Casado, number six for Ashcroft and David Rolls, number seven for Ashcroft. The other two on five points. But it's Fairfield with the ball just outside their quarter to Karate. Giving it now to Burke. Burke, a strong player, vice captain of the college, captain of the side, and a constant worry with his intelligent and robust running. Straight away through Watson and Mannix, it was. Karate. Well taken. 30 metres out from their own goal line, Fairfield with it. Through Robertson, Tapper. Sucks in free. 32 metres out from their goal line, and last one coming up on Fairfield. From acting half to Cartwright. There's a good punt. Good clearance from Maddox. Well taken by Darren Bell. Running game is swift, and his defence is spot on. They're up there, the chasers, and uh, kept him well and truly in their sights. A couple of metres short of halfway from acting half, Ashcroft. And Jim Bell, strong and more than capable. Rarely to ground with the ball. That was one of the very few occasions. Rolls on a double. But Fairfield contain him. Fairfield have adopted a strange pattern of defence, really, John. They've got their number one, their fullback, playing back in a cover defending role just behind the line, and, and Watson, their halfback's extremely deep in the fullback position. Final of the Commonwealth Bank Cup here at Leichhardt Abel, Ashcroft High, Patrician Brothers Fairfield, nil all. Scrumming it almost on Fairfield's quarter. It's a double blue ball with Watson trying to probe. I thought he dropped it behind, and referee West recalls play, though, for a knock-on. So they'll scrub it. Uh, a couple of metres outside Fairfield's quarter, and they've been virtual prisoners up there, portion of half of the field, since the opening minutes. So David rolls, pace off the mark, bust any defence, and he goes. Fairfield ball, this is he, rolls. Over the top, Watson, Ashcroft. Ready to turn it on. Here goes Smith, an Islander, Metropolitan under 15 representative, plays for Parramatta ball and takes it up with Sting, as you saw that time. So, referee West halts play for the apparent losing the ball. And we'll have a scrum 10 metres in from touch on the far side of the ground and about 18 metres out from Fairfield's goal line. Again, pressure on the double blues. Taken up on the short side as Watson, halted by Rolls. And over the top is Leggett, as Burke tried to make ground for Fairfield. Straight away to Karate, looks for a runner, gets it. Jim Bell is strong in defence. Penalties and scrums at this stage, uh, Bill, uh, Fairfield. Scrums are four to one in favour of Fairfield, and that's a good lead to them, and three to two, the penalties favour Ashcroft. OK. From acting half comes uh, Kimber Rothwell. Taken by Kyle White. And Darling serves rolls. Good back up on the loop, and there's a nice break here by Faye. He can go too. But Fairfield, good tackling there by Robertson. Sharp and right in on there. Straight away to Rolls. Out to Casado. And Robertson will regain it for Fairfield. Over the top is Rolls. Both sides are making a number of handling errors and probably the one area that the coaches would need to work on at half-time is simply the holding the ball for six tackles. You, you're not able to put any pressure on the opposition when you haven't got the ball. It's very difficult to mount pressure in defence. Neither side, as Bill said, controlling it. Nerves galore. 12 minutes gone of the first half and score is nil all. As Fairfield bring it forward. Cartwright serving Watson. There's a double on Karate who looks for the break. Half one, Emery underneath. And over the top was Peter Grove. Out to Tapper. Dangerous player. Not this time. And it's Solano. Taken by the Ashcroft defence. Leggett in there, as I said, the youngest player in the side. Big clearance from Mannix. Back to Paul Smith. 
And this fella, two tries against Kibra. Utilizes his speed on his side, but all top tackle. And a scrum. It was big stuff because they think very highly of um, Paul Smith. He's only Bill. a 15-year-old Smith, but I know both of his coaches think of him in the Eric Growth mould. He's a big, strong young fellow, and if he's half as good as Eric, he'll go all the way. Yep. Made for motion. Here's Karate. There's a cutout on Robertson, gives it to Tapper. He's on a run around. Tapper making good move for two, and uh, Karate on the right. So acting there in, in acting half is uh, Watson. Blocked off, though, by Grove and Bell up on the line. Straight away to Watson. Short ball. Burke looking for the bust. Over the top, Smith controlling him on the quarter. Ashcroft's quarter, but Fairfield with the ball, flying it, trying to pour it out. Unnecessary pass there by uh, Newton. Trying to line up. And a scrum to go down just outside Ashcroft's quarter. It's nil all and 15 minutes of play gone in this first half. We have an interesting observer down here tonight to have a look at both sides because they have six between these two teams on scholarship to the Parramatta Rugby League Football Club. Come in, Graham Hughes. Thanks, John. A, a very eager Parramatta coach tonight. John looking at some guys for future Parramatta stars. Well, the good thing about this um, championship game is that there are two sides out here and they're all Parramatta juniors. So we're particularly pleased to have both sides in, um, in, in a contest like this one to, to make the final out of... Uh, all the top sides in the state. Who's impressed you most, John? Oh, well, Stephen Karate, the 5'8 the out here, plays for Parramatta under 23, so I, I know him and uh, I know his play. And, of course, the other boys, the boys from um, Ashcroft have got the big wraps on them, the halfback rolls and the 5'8 the Casada, and, of course, there's another Emery out there. They never seem to uh, cease coming up, the Emery brothers, and I believe this Emery's a very good player, Bruce Emery. How about an early tip? Oh, well, I, I've got to hedge my bets. I, you know, I, I just hope the best side wins the game. OK, there you are, John. Johnny Money sitting on the fence. Good one, Graham Hughes and Johnny Money. Well, uh, Peter Grove, the offender and the penalty from a very, very handy range. You couldn't have it much handier to Greg Maddox, who was really on with his goal kicking eight out of nine against Eastwood Morris Brothers. But last week, only one out of eight against Copeland. But the fans hoping here tonight that uh, because when he's on, he can shoot lights out. He won't have to be real great to do this one, but the nerves are on him. Thousands of eyes riveted on this motion. He has it well cued. Greg Mannix, the fullback for Patrician Brothers Fairfield. Opening points, the big question mark. Sweet as a pie, two points. Fairfield Patrician Brothers leading Ashcroft High 2-0 in our Commonwealth Bank Cup final. Well, Fairfield, five players back from last year, but with the acquisition of eight new caps, coach Kevin Burke, with his top secret formula for success, has moulded this outfit into a very well-drilled side. In possession, very enterprising and constructive, as you'll see tonight, and in defence, they're totally committed. When two, when two teams get this far, obviously there's very little difference between them in ability, and where Ashcroft are falling down, as Fairfield have only dropped the ball on three occasions, Ashcroft have dropped at six, but they're losing the scrums to tremendous six to one against, and once you... Once once you're losing possession at that rate, you just can't keep touch with a side that's of similar ability to you. And there are the scrums and penalties now, John. 6-1 the scrums to Fairfield, and the penalties are three all. So that's the area that Ashcroft have got to improve in. Right, well, that was big Murray Price. Redoubtable effort last week, emerged as a giant. But now it's Ashcroft with the ball through Jim Bell. Take three or four to hold this fella. Boy, he's a worker. Casado at acting half. Those long legs, hard and fast they are. Merging forward about three metres. Cartwright of acting half. Straight away to Rolls. Rolls switching. Coming onto it strongly. Fay veering back on the inside. Good tackle. It was a good Cartwright. run by Fay, but he didn't look. He had two players on one here on his left-hand side. Rolls. Looking. Kelly was there. Stray ball again, but Ashcroft have come up with it through Cartwright. And there was a knock on, I thought, by Cartwright, by Casado going past. Oh, nearly scooped out of the air. Emily was watching. A tapper is here. Back on the inside, picked up beautifully, but all forward. He's put his foot into touch, John. Oh, put his foot into touch. By G whiz. No. And if they were driving through there, they've been controlling the ball and mounting pressure. Fair Fairfield, yes, he's put his foot into touch. Taken beautifully there. As the Ashcroft defense was coming across in cover. 
but it's fair feel and they've won it again i think well, that's, that's a scrum against the head and that's that is the one area that ashcroft have got to improve proving it's their scrum and scrummaging that is what's letting them down tonight ashpole plays it through watson this is Casati. now white lovely ball robertson he's got the pace oh but a bad pass to tapper going back for it on a rescue and they were to no avail solano they look dangerous and looked as though they could be overlapping by one here it is again there's a nice pass from Kyle White. Gets it to Robertson. Robertson has sheer speed, exhilarating, and was cutting out Tapper. Give it out wide to Solano. This is Casado. Uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic of him tonight. Put down a couple of messy balls. But it's uh, carry on through Bruce Emery. And Ashcroft still retain the ball. Referee Graham West has said six more. Now rolls. Lovely ball out to Faye. Taken by Robert Frigio. Just short of their own side of halfway with rolls. Cutting out Faye, giving it to Leggett. Leggett doing a beaver stuff. Five metres short of his own side of halfway. Now Casado. Charged down by Kyle White. And a scrum. Midway between the quarter and halfway, and an exceptionally good crowd here. So early in the evening, and it's 2 0 in favour of Fairfield over Ashcroft. Good stuff here. Ashcroft fans, as have the Fairfield fans, have poured from their homes to like art and just producing here, as you can see. Our cameras will pick it up for you. Just an orgy of cheering and colour for their team. And boy, aren't they responding with a, a continuation of uh, some outstanding football. There's the free taken by Fairfield and again putting pressure on Ashcroft. They'll be called now to put in a great defensive effort. Ashpole stopped by Faye. At least uh, Jim Bell. Cartwright. Supporters there for Fujo. Double foils left, right and centre. Price coming through on the flat. He's punched them. Oh, he's out. Is he over? Graham West and first try to Fairfield. Or oh, did he make his presence felt? Hero of the moment. And he scored it in telling style. Murray Price, they lead 6 0. But he can put this try down to one man, Murray Price. It was a set play, a Chris Pro Cross, and Price came through on the fly. He's like a human steamroller here. He bumped the number nine out of the road, and once he got his sights set on the try line, there was no way anyone was going to stop him, and there it is. Well, here it is, as I said, treble foils coming through on the flat is Price. Out of the one tackle, bumps off Smith, and that's no mean task, I'll tell you. Rolls comes out at him, but he just carries them on over. And as I said last week, here it is again on, on replay. Cartwright giving a lovely ball to Price and comes through speedy and a bumping runner. Rolls to no avail, comes in with the tackle. Darren Bell is there, but the big stretch. And as I said, Murray Price... <laughs> a great look of contentment there. Fairfield, 6-0, and Mannix. Can he do it again? Got it queued up. Off the mound. And uh, Greg Mannix. Hoping that uh, his direction, his control is as good as his first one, which was in a very, very handy situation for him. And blow me down, it's fallen off again. And there's not that all that much wind. As you can have a look at the uprights, they were limp as I spoke, and now uh, a gush of wind has them waving once more. So Mannix. Eyes riveted on that ball. Here he comes. He triggers it off. And... Um, not too far away, but a miss. And Patricia Brothers Fairfield leading Ashcroft High six points to nil in our Commonwealth Bank Cup final. Play recommencing with a big charge now coming from Kyle White. Sparks his side with uh, a good, strong running game. Now goes Frank Solano. The tacklers. Cartwright. Casado. Fairfield stretch left and right. They'll switch it. 
And sucking in Darling, Grove and Faye. I said last week he had a redoubtable effort and uh, he would have to repeat it tonight against Ashcroft and boy gee hasn't he done it with that opening try running straight and busting them midway between the quarter and halfway Cartwright at acting half to the left Watson the little float over the top here come the chasers and I think it's Maddox with it but uh, penalty to Ashcroft Offside. Well, it was offside on that occasion, but I think that it was a good ploy by Patrician Brothers Fairfield. There's no cover defence back for Ashcroft. They chipped over the top, as you can see here, into the little hole. They gave a very good chase. Unfortunately, the bounce didn't favour them. The kick forward hit the player in front, and it's a penalty, but it's worth another try. Right, Mannix was up there, and so too was Watson, who executed that deed. So darling, young Rocky, so tough as he. He's the number 12 for Ashcroft. Now the wide ball to Casado. Well looked after here tonight by uh, Karate and Price is there. Straight back to Rolls, cut out on uh, Emery, back to Kelly. Kelly contained, still out of, still going there, but uh, Murray Price. Okay, blocks him off. Okay, comment from Graham Hughes. Very interesting start to the game, John. I mentioned before they went into this match as five favourites. It's turning out that the underdogs are the ones that are really putting it all together. They're just playing very, very controlled football. And the man that could easily win it for them is Stephen Karate. Let's not forget that they're going to go into the second half with a very, very strong breeze at their backs. And Karate could uh, very easily take full control of the game and Fairfield run home with it. Graham Ashcroft just making too many mistakes. Well, I think they're trying to run one out. I think they're all trying to win the final by themselves, Bill. They, they've been renowned right through this Commonwealth Bank Cup for playing great attacking football. But as a football team, uh, these guys have just got to realise they've got a great back line. Forwards settle the play down and then send the ball out wide and stop trying to run one out. Well, here's a fellow whose attitude is remorseless and his attack is always there. And this is uh, Mitch Newton, number 11, who just played it. Now coming into the action is Kyle White. And the tackler is uh, Peter Grove. Straight here to Karate. It's a good one. Going back for it, rolls. Darren Bell on the chase as well. Gives it now to Paul Smith. And here is the young winger, winding up. Not for long. Trapped here by Robertson. Good tackle. Picked him off well. Casado. No Smith. Arthur Smith. And again, Robertson in there to do the tackling. Rolls. Lovely ball to Casado. It'll be too big. Not on his kicking game tonight, are the Bill? No, he's not. casado has been put well off his game, but I think we should give some credit uh, there to Fairfield because they've put a lot of pressure on him and hurried him uh, so that he's been forced into error. We pinpointed this young man, number six for Ashcroft, at the start of the game. He has dominated the 5'8 role as no one else has done with talent that has just shattered the opposition, but tonight being well and truly controlled. John, this might sound surprising, but to my mind, one of the areas that Ashcroft are also falling down on is the fact they're not running enough from dummy half. They're trying to spread the ball, but there's no one going forward. I think if they could get that early yardage and the forwards do the hard work, run from dummy half, take it up the middle, get Fairfield going back, then they'd have the opportunities to spread the ball, but they've hardly had a run from dummy half at all. OK, that's a deep one, and uh, Watson has accomplished it. Just outside Ashcroft's quarter, with Fairfield on the attack again, through Cartwright coming up to take it first up is Frank Solano. Missed the Copeland game. Good to see him back in the paddock tonight. A very strong performer through Watson. Now Karate gives a good ball to Robertson. Halted just outside Ashcroft's quarter. Cartwright again. Quick ball to Watson. Scoops it out to Karate. Switching back to Watson. Coming into the line now. Ashbowl. Side on hit pass to uh, Kelly, uh, to Tapper. And wound up here with Kimber Rothwell saving for Ashcroft. From acting half, let's see what they take any notice of you, Bill. Peter Graven, he's done well too. That's Good the area. second rower. That's the area they've got to hit. A couple from dummy half, try and get Fairfield going back, then they can spread the ball. He's number 10 and always leads the charges too. Coming out of it beautifully, Faye takes the tackle. Good tackle from Robert Fridjo. You see there how they took the play two passes, but they were driven backwards by a very eager Fairfield defence. Casado clearing, and this could be a better kick. Now on the out of team whiz. Definitely not on his game tonight. Because normally uh, they're long flighted balls, deep ones, and they find it with almost pinpoint accuracy. We've been uh, very heavy in our praises of this number six for Ashcroft. Long, powerful legs that go hard and fast. And he sets up so many intricate plays too. He does the plotting. He's a tremendous weapon here for Ashcroft. But tonight, they're right on it. Keen Terry is in defense. Now Robertson. Can he free the ball to Tapper? Tapper's got the speed. 
He gets out of one, gives it beautifully to Solano. Cover coming across. Oh, bang! Shuddering hit. Oh, boy, did they cause that one the knees to shake. Tapper at acting hard. Going back forward is Watson. Six more, says referee West. Watson probing. Stopped on the corner. Tapper in there at acting half. Looking for supports. Gets it to K K Karate. Six more. Out wide to Mannix. Up there to make a break. He can unload it. Oh, snapped out of the air by Paul Smith. Boy, don't let him go. He can run his boots off. Now it's Ashcroft. Blocked off close to their quarter. And by golly, what a first half it's been. Fairfield leading 6-0. And there's our update on the scrums and penalties. Fairfield, a mammoth 8-2 lead in the scrums, and the penalties 5-4 in their favour. Right. So it's uh, it's been a cracker first half here in our Commonwealth Bank Cup uh, from... Uh, John, like there's, been, there's been one scrum against the feed, and that's just indicative of the way the game's going. It was won by Fairfield. Right. back we'll have it back here with the scrum to go down midway between the quarter and halfway in Ashcroft's territory Ashcroft they've scooped the pool with wins in previous rounds they've given Ashcroft a, a record that's proud impressive victories against Holy Cross ride and King to the park but it's Fairfield with the ball charged down Casado here this could be anything Casado trapped wrapped up by uh, Tapper and Maddox back inside to Smith and he's wrapped up just as the halftime hooter sounds at Leichhardt Oval. Some marvellous memories to remember in that first half of some solid defence. We had some messy ball but it's Fairfield in the lead at halftime leading Ashcroft High by six points to nil in our Commonwealth Bank Cup final. We'll take this breather and then rejoin you for the second half action. Joining us at Leichhardt Oval for the Commonwealth Bank Cup for 1985 and we've had action non-stop and at a very enthralling opening session but it's Fairfield leading Ashcroft by six points to nil and I'd say they have just a powerful feeling of optimism at this particular stage a break back I'm wondering if we can get it from Ashcroft Bill Anderson well we can John but they've got a lot of work to do they've got to improve in three areas Firstly, they've got to improve very much their scrummaging. When they do get the ball, they've got to control it better. And I think they've got to try and earn those hard yards up the middle before they try to spread the ball. Let's transport you down there to the touchline. Graham Hughes with changes for the second half. John Kyle Ashball from Fairfield has been replaced by number 16, Ricky Judd. And Glenn Kelly is off for Ashcroft. Uh, Kimber Rothwell has gone into the centres. And Darren Edward, uh, Reynolds playing in 14, has gone in Kelly's place. Graham Hughes with changes there as Arthur Smith decides to take it forward for Ashcroft before being wrapped up by Warren Price. Or Murray Price. Here's Casado. Nice ball rolls. You can see there that all Ashcroft did was take the ball one pass or run from dummy half and they went 50 metres in three rucks. That's the sort of play they'll need to introduce. Not spreading the ball too early on the tackle count. Nice finding of touch two from Casado. Um, Casado, as we've said, has been outstanding at 5'8", but the young fellow opposite him tonight, razor-sharp brain and beautiful hands, an accurate probing boot have you seen in the first half, and I'm talking about Steve Karate. They're both excellent players. To my mind, Karate's probably better suited to the 5'8 position than Casado. I think Casado will finish in great football as a lock forward. What's it was for Fairfield? And now Cartwright moving into acting half. Finds our replacement player for Fairfield, and that's Ricky Judd. Played against Copeland, had a good game. Now it's Price again, the opening try scorer. Fairfield bringing it up 10 metres short at their own side of halfway. Now calling on Newton to do some work. White, but jammed back there. Good tackle from Grove. Looks so robustly good when he goes into hit with the shoulder. Bell at least. There's the little kick on from Watson. Now it's Emery. And the penalty to Fairfield. Do you see that, Bill? 
Yes, it, it was for the late. Yeah. It was for the late tackle after the player been uh, the ball had been chipped over the top. The player gave pursuit to the uh, pursuit to the kick. We can see he gets knocked over there, and that was very very late. The referee had no option but to give the penalty. All right, it's Mannix then, looking looking for the line. And there's our scrums and penalties again, and we can see Fairfield still holding that huge lead, 10 to 2 in the scrums, and they've got a lead of 6 to 4 in the penalty. So that's a lot of possession to play with. All right, it's Newton now. The on-rushing Newton being the main runner, but it's Ashcroft with the ball, and it's Casado trying to make a break, and well handled there. Nullified by Frigio. Cartwright the blocker in association with Newton now. As Ashcroft come away with through Cartwright, through Darling. Now, Leggett with a load of determination and pours into the play for Ashcroft. A former student of Patrician Brothers Fairfield is with Graham Hughes on the touchline. Paul Langmack, I guess uh, tonight's final brings back a few memories. Your old side, uh, I believe you were successful in 1982. Yes, it does bring back a few memories, and uh, it's great to see Fairfield still in the finals. They put in a great first half, and now they turn around and find the wind at their backs. Yes, oh, they've seen a lack of a bit of concentration, but uh, hopefully the boys will get over it. Who have you liked uh, in this in both these sides? But... Oh, both the five eights are good players. And um, the halfback from Fairfield, Mark Watson's a good player also. So what are your tactics for the remaining remainder of this match? Play down their half with the win, you know, plenty of kicking and just wait for them to make the mistakes. Okay, good luck. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mark. Paul Langmack, who incidentally was our player of the year when he played for Patrician Brothers Fairfield. And now back rower for Canterbury Bankstown. So it's Darling sizing up a move here for Ashcroft as they come through. Rolls giving a nice ball. But Messi again not controlling it. Ash Ash Ashcroft have got a lot of set plays. They've got a lot of uh, predetermined moves that they've put a lot of work into. But I don't think the way things are panning out tonight that this is the time or the, or the place to be using them. I think they've got to get back to fundamentals and get their game in order. Tim Gilbert coming on in jumper number uh, 14 for Fairfield and replacing Kyle White. Has done a lot of damage in the first half and can walk off with his head held high. So it's Fairfield's ball and on their quarter, nearing their cheering squad in knelt position as they come pouring through. The stopper is Jim Bell for Ashcroft. Straight away to Karate. Finds Price. Again. It's taking a lot of stopping, isn't he? My word, he is. Very effective here tonight. Big switch. I thought he'd have tabbed a Fairfield player there interfering with Jim Bell coming through, but it doesn't matter here is Rolls. Rolls with almost a little faint. Trying to work something with Casati. Casado. Rolls got no support then whatsoever from his outside supports. He used a little jink. He created a hole. He was ready to pop the pass up into that gap, but no one had come. I thought Casado would have been there because their partnership has been so productive with six more coming up for Fairfield. As Ashcroft now coming in with some torrid tackling, being asked to button up Fairfield and keep them in their quarter. Now it's Watson with another little jink a, a jinking run with the score at 6-0 uh, in favour of Fairfield after five minutes of play. Come in Graham Hughes. Yes, John, I think this Fairfield side is showing a little bit of inexperience here as if they could... Just listen, that's the way they should be playing. And listen to what Paul Matt Langmack had to say a few moments ago. They shouldn't be trying to win this final from their own quarter line. They've got a great breeze at their backs and let Karate use it. Don't try and play their whole six tackles. First and second tackle, get out of their own territory. OK, Graham Hughes, that was Paul Smith, number five, hungry and lean for running. Now it's Smith being contained by the Fairfield defence. Just inside the Fairfield portion of halfway, Casado with a little faint. Can't unload it. Good tackling there coming from Frigio. Always in the thick of things. Strong and very much there in defence. Now coming through is Jim Bell. But Murray Price clips him. Darling serves Rolls, who switches it to Fay. Offloading. Over the top is Tim Gilbert. Last one on Ashcroft. Here is Rolls. Long ball. Emery well taken. And he's got Rothfield on the right. Rothfield, Smith on the inside. Lovely play. Unloading it to Casado. Casado, oh yes! Yes, they've swung back with retaliation.
possession. They're coming back and are trying to match the play. Super stuff from, from Ashcroft. Fairfield leads 6-4. Well, we've been talking about the combination between the two halves, Rolls and Casado, and this whole move started back with Rolls. It was a magnificent pass here from, from one off the ruck. He had a look, he realised the opportunity was out wide, he turned a pass from left and right, and it was a huge looping pass over the top to Emery. Emery shrugged off Robinson, he realised he had support on the outside, he drew the winger, then fired the ball to his support. Smith here made the break down the right-hand side, turned the ball back inside again, and here Casado was the man that loomed up on the inside to take that pass, he had to fight off one tackle. There was cover defence coming across, but he beat the cover defence also. And he did a great job here of improving his position. He realised if he could get round under the post, he'd make it a lot easier for goal kicker. And he lunges across for the four points. Well, there it was. Now you know why we tell you they were the hottest and the best of the breed in 85. Here he is turning sideways to balloon a beautiful pass. Magically taken and evading Robertson as Emery. Slaps on the pace. And as I said, Rothwell was backing up on the right. Overlapping by one. Here is Smith, the small Larry Growth serves it up to Cassandra and I've mentioned about this fella's legs hard, long and fast and as Billy said, going over to improve the position to make it 6-4 and he's converted the try it's 6-all and we are game in our Commonwealth Bank Cup final from Leichhardt Tonight, $6,000 worth of national Panasonic equipment will be distributed to these schools as well. Tonight's winner will take back to the school $4,000 and the runner-up $2,000 in TV equipment. As Casado puts it down, Watson back there on his quarter. It comes from National Panasonic, and uh, again, we express our thanks to the company for their enthusiastic support for this competition. A competition that's become one of the great breeding grounds for rugby league stars of the future, and only through the assistance of people like the Commonwealth Bank, of course, National Panasonic, and of course, the people who televise it for you, Channel 10. That try might have been just what Ashcroft needed to get their game back on the rails. They were having a lot of problems trying to develop any pattern and any consistency in their play, but now that might just be the spur for them to go back to basics, work the ball up through the forwards, get some consistency in the play, and they could be able to go on with it from here. I think you might be right, Billy. Beautifully taken by Darren Bell, setting up the pace, blocked off there, eight metres short of his own side of halfway. They've had the fans gasping at grounds and at home watching on Channel 10 with their revolutionary type of play. You've just had a of it just a few moments ago here is roll serving it up now coming onto its strongest fay there is the there the big man whoa trying to throw him down like Sir Waller rally's cape but he can't and uh, it's a penalty to Ashcroft Ty trying to take the ball away from him and Ashcroft Casado looking to set himself for the line so talented, so resolute, this fella. Digital watch timing with his passes and a great boot. Finds touch beautifully. Just about uh, 38 metres out from Fairfield's goal line. Six all. Try a piece. Both tries converted. Straight away to Rolls. The touch on now to Casado. Smith, oh, he's blinded at them. He's got the one on one. Has he got the pace? Oh, yes. Oh, he's able for a try. A winger. Oh, he's charged everybody's batteries and just sailed through the branch as if he had a winged keel. Billy, I'm wondering if Ben Lexon designed his boots. Well, it was a great try, but there was some tremendous play inside. We can see here exactly what happened. The Ashcroft players took the tap, and then they looked as if they appealed to the referee as what's gone wrong, what's happened. The Fairfield players stopped. That hold in play gave the break for Smith to make this tremendous split through the line. He shrugged off a tackle and plunges over under the post. Great try. Oh, and look at him here, and he's in a running mood, and he just brushes them off like kids' toys. Look, one, two, and he comes to the foot of the fullback Maddox. Look at that lovely swerve and those big legs, and they call him Eric Growth number two. Larry's coaches, Mark Rusco and Stephen Davies. Here he is again. Look at this fella. Experience, that's talent, that's football, that's Ashcroft football. And they lead 10-6 with the conversion to come. There it is, up and easy, good ball, right on. And it's 12-6, Ashcroft thundering back in our Commonwealth Bank Cup final and leading Patrician Brothers Fairfield, 12-6. Well now, can Fairfield come back? 
Their Ford's been able to hold their own with rival packs. Their backs are pretty run happy. They've shown nothing short of dash and dazzle football. And their supporters are expecting the best in the second half. They deserve it. And nine times out of ten, they always get it. But they're playing Ashcroft tonight. And here comes um, Jim Bell. Well, two tries in ten minutes would be enough to take the wind out of anyone's sails. And let's see how Fairfield can hit back from there. It's going to be hard work, but it's not beyond them. Watson, just outside his quarter. Beach Darling. Casado was around his ankles. Now Tapper from acting half. Six more for Fairfield. Tapper, 10 metres short of his own side of halfway. Cartwright at acting half. Shoots it straight to Watson. Now Karate gives a nice ball. Robertson. But they've checked him. He says, play it. Referee Graham West said, play it. And the penalty is with Ashcroft. Probably no fault of Robertson's that one, except he didn't hear what had happened. Well, of course, a young man who was in the glorious Ashcroft side in 77 that produced so many graded players for Penrith and Parramatta, and one of those exciting players is downstairs with Graham Hughes. Oh, I'm sorry, I was to understand he may have been with uh, Graham Hughes. An interested spectator instead is uh, Paul Taylor, need I say, outstanding fullback and halfback for Parramatta, and one of the gem players from the 77 side. But now it's Ashcroft relishing this action, hot on attack, 15 metres out from Fairfield's goal line. Darling, a cluster of players there to halt any further progress. Big stoppers as they come to Rolls. Rolls a lovely balloon pass over wide. It's Faye scored a try out there wide the last time. Casado turning it over. So a scrum to go down 12 metres out from Fairfield's goal line and it's the double blues now. They'll be asked to tackle to a standstill. Ashcroft lead 12-6 and Ashcroft in a running mood and ready to unleash their ruthless machine again. Served by Fairfield and a penalty Ashcroft. Incorrect feed from Mark Watson. The same player can be a motivator. His ball skills outstanding. But his feed tonight, not spot on. Let's keep our eye on David Rolls here, the halfback for Ashcroft. He's instrumental in most of their set plays. He's a beautiful, beautiful handler of the ball and a beautiful reader of play. OK, that's the third differential. And the offender being Mark Watson. So it's Ashcroft. Here goes Darling from acting half. Oh, gee, this Fairfield side, they'll have to tackle to a standstill. Here is Rolls on to Casado with a little feint. Those legs working again. Burke over the top. Underneath is Mitch Newton. F uh, Ashcroft, 10 metres out. Rolls working a lovely ball. Oh, oh. Hit in the midsection there by Newton again. Now it comes straight away up to Rolls. Little feint. Cheeking work. Rolled over there by Fridjo. And last one coming up on Ashcroft. Now you're seeing this magic football. Serve straight away to Casado. Now can he unleash the ball? The kick on. Mannix. Mannix still five metres out from his goal line. Oh, Fairfield. Required to show their poise and speed and discipline now as the penalty goes to them. Their result sheet has been very big. Mannix for the line. And pushes it up. Well, a young fellow who uh, missed the grand final from the Ashcroft side in 77, probably one of the great wingers with the most potential I've seen, but missed it through breaking his leg and is now the co-coach with Mark Rusko for Ashcroft High, is with Graham Hughes. Steve, I couldn't help but notice after that last try from Ashcroft, they all rushed over uh, to congratulate you on the sideline. It was obviously your move. Uh, yes, Graham. Well, <laughs> it's been a move that we used in 1982 in the Buckley Shield grand final in Newcastle. Won us the game then. That's... I'm pretty sure these fellas are going to find out and win it again. Here's Rolls with a beautiful break. He opened them up again. He's 12 metres out from the goal line. You'll have to hold it, Stephen, for a moment. As Katar Casado side on to Arthur Smith. Smith taken by uh, Tim Gilbert. And we're waiting for them uh, 12 metres out from Ashcroft's goal line. Arthur Smith will play it. Now from acting half goes Darling. Eight metres out from Fairfield's goal line. 
Ashcroft now with the big switch to Casado through the middle, fading as if to top it over the top. Mark Watson controls him. Foundation, they'll have to lay it here for the defence. Here is Rolls, lovely ball to Emery. Emery strong as a ball. And looked after by Cartwright and pummeled back by Murray Price as well, honing in with all of his hostility there. Now it's leashed out there to Rolls with a little kick on. Mannix takes it from behind his own goal line. Launches himself 10 metres out and a great save. A crucial save. Back to you, Graham. Thanks, John. Steve, it was a very slow start for the side, but they've certainly come out firing. Yes, mate. Nerves plays a big part with this side. They're, they're highly strung. They, they love uh, playing very complex football. And unfortunately, the uh, the talk for the, from the Fairfield boys uh, pretty well sort of bluffed them a little bit in the first half. OK, we'll leave it to you for the rest of the match. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Now here is Fairfield with uh, Frank Solano making good ground before cut down by the replacement player Darren Reynolds on the left flank. Robertson to Karate. Pride and spirit with Fairfield, but by golly, Ashcroft have come back with it here in the second half. John, this, Watson, this lovely what balloon cup pass. Tapper, Tapper with it. John, this is what cup football is all about. We've got a side here, Ashcroft throwing everything they've got at Fairfield, trying to get that that little bit extra cushion to get themselves in front. And Fairfield, there's no way they're going to give an inch. No. Nope. Uh, Fairfield uh, replacement on number 15 is uh, Chris Brassel, Tommy Brassel's son. And off comes uh, Murray Price after an outstanding game against Copeland last week and uh, scoring the opening try for Fairfield here tonight. <clears throat> Tommy Brassel, one of the most respected of racing men in Sydney and at Varan, and this is his young son. Uh, Steve Finale, actually. I was thinking of uh, Chris Brassel, number 15 for Ashcroft. It's Finale, number 15 for Patrician Brothers Fairfield. You get caught up in all this emotion here. OK, it's Faye. Worked back. Double. Done through Smith. Back again to uh, Grove. Nullified on the quarter. Now Arthur Smith to Rolls. The touch on now to Darren Bell. Long pass for Darren Reynolds. Skirting, hasn't the legs. Cover is good. Outside Fairfield's quarter. Chopped down is Emery. And serves straight away to Rolls. Good pass here to Fay. But the tackling is coming off well for Fairfield. Finale in there. His opening tackle. Casati for the drop goal attempt. It's a boomer. It's a boomer and Ashcroft through the boot and the accurate sniping boot of Casano. Here it is again. Oh, sweet as a plum. Right there. And they lead by 13 to 6. Leg it now. All go for Ashcroft. The young lock forward. Now Arthur Smith. A good 12 metre game. Straight back to Casado. Lines up a good ball there to Emery. Sandwiched by Burke and also Ricky Joe. Darling at acting half. Now rolls. Sending it back for Watson. Watson about to bring it back. Pass Grove. Grove says, I'll come at you again, and as he was going to steam away, he closed him down. Mannix, almost to his quarter. From acting half comes Frank Solano. He's a young fellow with a clear opening. He can react like lightning. Now, Karate, Robertson, good ball to Tapper. Piling them over there with good, strong, efficient defence. Ashcroft. Fairfield having to regroup here. Karate. We haven't seen a lot of Tapper or Robinson, the two centres for Fairfield tonight, and to my mind, the major reason for that is the fact they're 5'8 Karate's getting one off the ruck, so they've never really got a long back line set. Watson with a little floater. And Emery, the receiver for Ashcroft. Ten metres inside Fairfield's territory. And Smith. 
with some fancy work from a second rower. Casado, oh, look! Rolls was there and Smith on the outside. They were two on one. So 14 comes away, Tim Gilbert for Patrician Brothers Fairfield. Been in every quarter final since the Cup started in 75. And it speaks volumes for their coach, Kevin Burke, celebrating his Silver Jubilee, and they want to win it for him tonight. 25 years at the college, maths coordinator, very shy man. Can pull some rabbits out of the hat, but they'll need to do it tonight. Here's Tapper through them, and he's got Solano on the right. He'll do the little kick on. Ashcroft back there, and a beautiful tidy up. Oh, kick through Mannix. Six more, Fairfield applying the pressure. Picking it up now, Fritjo. Now it's Watson, and brought down by the Ashcroft defence. Oh, this is a top final. Smith in there, Paul Smith to do the tackling. Maddox with Watson, switch to Karate. Lovely ball. Smith in there to chop it off. Now Cartwright at acting half, straight away to Watson. The Jinka, straight into the arms of Chris Darling. Now Cartwright, through Maddox. Robertson, almost curving his body into a semi-arc but couldn't find the penetration. Tapper tries it. Four tries last week. Thrusted down, eight metres out from Ashcroft's goal line. Straight back to Karate. Up she goes, pinpoint accuracy. No pressure though. Oh! Kurt Casado, Billy Anderson. Well, he's dropped a number of balls tonight, but he showed plenty of confidence here. I'm sure the ball was called by other players, but he went in above the pack, pulled it down, almost lost it there, did a juggling act, and then finally came away with it. <laughs> We've spoken about his legs, but I tell you what, he had magical hands that time. So Ashcroft now trying to plunder forward he's this a time through Paul Smith. He's very much a player with confidence because he's made a number of handling errors tonight. That wasn't his ball, but he still went in there and called for it and was prepared to uh, to, to have a go for it. And I like aggressive players that are, that are prepared to try things even when they're making errors. But he is a player ahead in work and ahead in quality and ahead in style, isn't he? All right, it's a scoreline with uh, seven minutes to go in our cup final from Leichhardt Oval, Ashcroft High. The tall poppies, they're leading Patricia Brothers Fairfield 30 to 6. As you rejoin us here at Leichhardt, it's Jim Bell, really the ground with the ball, takes three or four to hold him, great willingness to take the ball up, and he was the one who played it. Then it came to Grove, now it's with Rolls. It's Airmail back now here to Mannix. And he's put down seven metres short of halfway. Fairfield's territory, Solano. Now Cartwright, through Watson, touch on to Casado, Robertson, they've looked after him well. Graham Hughes with another replacement detail. Yes, John, this time it is Chris Brazel, 15 for Ashcroft, waiting on the sideline to replace their hooker, Chris Barling. OK, there you got a good shot of him. Now Watson. But Ashcroft defence here, hitting powerfully, checking well. Karate. It's a high ball, big straight up punt. Jim, <laughs> he was offside, the big prop. So there's a big push and retreat Ashcroft back to their quarter. With Fairfield, their big chance now on the drive, ready to attack. Coming out of it strongly, Mitch Newton. 15 metres out from Ashcroft's goal line. Can they make up the leeway? A converted try will put them in front and will give them the cut. Here's Robertson, Tapper! Oh, scooped up there by Rick Judd. Now Tapper. Judd again. Straight to Karate. Back inside to Cartwright. To the quarter. Round his hips, Darling. Mannix at acting half. Coming it on strongly, Frigio. Fritjo, 12 metres out now from Ashcroft's goal line. Stretch to the right. Mannix 
Big pass. Karate. Maddox on the double. Looks for inside support. Great tackle. Big tackle from uh, Smith. Grove. Karate. No pressure this time. Casado takes it beautifully. Tapper is there. And good push stuff. Thirteen to six. And Ashcroft certainly are in no hurry to keep the play going. And they need seven points, of course, to bring them up to 13 all. I think in all the emotion here and excitement, it's uh, been a situation where I thought they might get up there with six points. Maybe and, a seven-point uh, try, John. Yes, my word, son. But it's been a game of uh, constant vitality, no small skill. Ashcroft as dynamic as ever. And look like with two minutes up our sleeve for the take it for the second time from three finals. They've matched anything in their glory years of 77. Graham Hughes, another replacement. Yes, Wayne O'Halloran for Ashcroft in 17 has just replaced Arthur Smith, the second round. Okay, the top game two. All right. Ashcroft, 13, Fairfield, 6. And Ashcroft, and Ashcroft can't lose this one, provided they play no frills, safety first football. And they've got a penalty here. All they need to do is put the ball out, work the ball around the rucks for their six tackles from dummy half and one off the ruck, and then kick and give a good chase on the last tackle. But the most important thing, and I'm sure what it'd be in their coach's mind, is they just don't have to make handling mistakes. It's not necessary for them to try and do anything, just hold the ball. Okay, it's Rolls looking for touch. They're the bearer of bearish news, I think, for Fairfield tonight. They've gone for the knockout, and I think they're going to get it. Well, they lost, the game chance. Really, they lost the game really in about a four- or five-minute period. That's right. And the chance beginning to rise now for Ashcroft. Hang on to your ears, because this crowd is going to be loud. Right on full time. So back it comes through rolls. Had a great game here tonight. Emery, well truly wrapped up there by Robert Fritjo. Casado at acting half. Smacked away. Mannix coming for it. It's been a hard pound of this final and a climax in Australia's ultimate contest for high schools. Fans expected a fair field finish for their Cinderella team this year and they've got it. But it looks like Ashcroft, their fast running backs, their ball running forwards, producing a feast of football again. Real exponents of rugby league game. That's been their trademark from the mid-70s. They're about to achieve the supreme honour here of taking out the Commonwealth Bank Cup for 1985. Australia's high school champions. <laughs> Acting half Emery, they ate at humble pie last year, dropped out after about the third round as Casada makes the break. A lovely ball over the rock, well back inside to Bell. And Ashcroft diving on the ball, and there it is. The hoot up, the players leap up in the air. A state of exaltation down there. Players, I reckon, are going to be besieged here by their cheering squad. Their coaches out on the field. A mighty victory to Ashcroft. Came back in the opening five, six minutes of the game to snatch it. And they're champions of Australian football in high schools throughout this vast country. I think we'll have a few words from the studio. We'll be back from the closing reception with the scoreline reading Ashcroft High defeating Patrician Brothers Fairfield by 13 points to six. of you who viewed the Commonwealth Bank Cup final through Channel 10 at home, we now join the public address system here at Leichhardt Oval where we acknowledge both teams who gave us a spectacle to remember here.
And now the 1985 Cup champions ready and are about to climb the steps to the presentation area. In the 11th year of the Commonwealth Bank Cup, they won it in 77 and again tonight. And that is the supreme honour, Ashcroft High. About to be enthroned as champions and what uh, two fine coaches in Mark Rusco and Stephen Davis. And can they be proud of this outstanding side? Their skipper, Tony Fay, their school captain, leading his side up the steps. They had a commanding victory, and they can certainly feel the warmth from you, ladies and gentlemen, here at Leichhardt. And presenting the cup is the Director of Sport and Recreation, Mr. Ken Brown, Mr. Alan Colwell, of the Senior Manager of the Community Relations of the Commonwealth Bank Cup, of the corporation, together with the president of the New South Wales Rugby League, Mr. Tom Bellew, and uh, representing Channel 10, Mr. George Brown. And there it is, the cup is uplifted, and their chests absolutely swell with pride. Look at that, Tony Fay. Scored a magnificent try here a couple of weeks ago as a winger. And there he is, proud as punch. They are the best of the breed for 85. There's a great shot of them. Tony Fay again, uplifting the cup. And as always, everyone here associated with the final receiving a memento of this great, great night. There it is, the Commonwealth Bank Cup being handed through every respective member of this outstanding Ashcroft High side. The game we saw, I think you'll agree, ladies and gentlemen, here at Leichhardt and of course you at home, uh, should be filed away in the annals of rugby league history in a special place because at times we saw it with stuff that were great moments in sport are made of. The Forbes knockout, Ashcroft won in the early part of this year. Now the Commonwealth Bank Cup. And if they can take off the university shield and then the state Hello, knockout, it will be the first time ever a school has accomplished that. But they've been uh, an outstanding side, as we said, that they have been the hottest the best of the breed in 85. Uh, they've had you at home gasping for breath with the turn of football that they've put on. That's Mark Rusco, now Stephen Davies. The blonde-headed uh, coach coach there uh, was a member of the 77 Ashcroft side and unfortunately on grand final night missed playing because of a broken leg. Graham West and their respective touch judges receiving their memento as well. There's a great shot of um, Ashcroft the losers, there you see them, Patrician Brothers Fairfield, and uh, they were just marvellous. They were uh, refreshed and a very refocused side in the opening 30 minutes here tonight, uh, but after many critics never giving them a chance at the start of the season, they pounced into this final and their supporters, of course, uh, were jubilant. They were ready and did play for their lives and played for their coach, Kevin Burke, a man who's been coach out there and coordinator of maths for 25 years. Now, um, the voting in tonight's Player of the Year award. The one point went to Stephen Cartwright of Fairfield, the halfback. The two points went to Bruce Emery of Ashcroft, the centre three quarter. And the three points tonight went to the halfback, David Rolls. And those points, ladies and gentlemen, now determine that the Player of the Year award goes to Ashcroft's half, David Rolls. The player of the year, a young man, enormously talented. You can see his, his jubilation there, being congratulated by an equally great player, Tony Casado, there, 5'8". The year belonged to his school, Ashcroft High, but tonight belongs to him one of the season's hot numbers, young David Rolls. Our player of the year, a remarkable achievement, because I can't remember uh, a group of players all up there in a traffic jam of five and six points with so many gifted footballers. Everyone could have been the player of the year, but David Rolls has taken it. So there it is on you. Screens at home, a superb shot of Ashcroft High. We'll pause now and be back after this break for Bill Anderson's complete summary. Oh. 